Right now, France becoming the first U.S. ally to launch airstrikes on ISIS. The country's president, Francois Hollande, announcing successful strikes on targets in northern Iraq, destroying an ISIS logistics depot and killing dozens. Hollande also vowing more strikes to come, but stressing that France's help would end there. David Gartenstein Ross, he is a senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies and has just returned from the Middle East and he joins us now with his perspective. Thank you for joining us. Good to join you. How do we defeat ISIS? Is there a vulnerability? Is there an Achilles heel, so to speak? ISIS is a very vulnerable organization. I'd say that the biggest Achilles heel is its very dramatic announcement that it had reestablished the caliphate. One thing this does is it requires that the organization maintain a viable caliphate. If it loses that, then it loses a lot of its legitimacy. And as such, it's likely to expend far more resources to maintain territory than is militarily wise. And speaking of what is militarily wise, in terms of airstrikes, we mentioned that France has now joined us. When the president spoke, he also talked about 40 other countries joining in a coalition, um, Arab countries joining and helping us. How important will that be to completing our mission there? The coalition gives legitimacy to efforts, but in terms of airstrikes, it's not clear you'll get a whole lot other than uh, U.S., French, and maybe British airstrikes. Uh, you may see some airstrikes carried out uh, by UAE, for example, but they'll only be a, a small percentage of what's done overall. The broad coalition is important for legitimacy purposes. Another thing that's important, other than airstrikes, is that you have people who are going after ISIS on the ground, because the U.S. isn't going to be uh, putting in ground troops other than perhaps the special operations forces. To that extent, you have Iraqi forces. Forces, Kurdish forces uh, and actually Iranian forces as well that are working against ISIS on the ground. Yes, and uh, the president mentioned training and supplying weapons for uh, Syrian forces, Syrian opposition groups. How do we know who in fact we're dealing with there and is it choosing the lesser of uh, evils? I don't think we do know who we're working with there. Uh, I mean, there, there are moderate groups. Uh, there clearly is ISIS, and there are more moderate groups who are fighting them. But also, those moderate groups haven't broken with the Nusra Front, which is al-Qaeda's uh, recognized affiliate on the ground in Syria. I mean, some moderate groups have, but the majority of them have not, because Nusra, unlike ISIS, is good with, uh, it worked with other people on the ground. And look, from the rebel perspective, it's perhaps understandable. When you're fighting against the Assad regime and all the terrible things it's done, then you're going to to look for all the allies you can. But from a perspective of U.S. strategic interests, I have a lot of concern that the things that we provide to rebels will end up in the wrong hands. I want to talk about um, part of the propaganda campaign that ISIS has launched. And you wrote this article, it was released on Wednesday, when you were talking about their vulnerabilities. And you said that their brutality that they have broadcast in these videos, these beheadings, could actually end up working against them. Absolutely. Uh, it looks very good right now when they're winning. It's drawing people to the theater. You have these zealous young men who are celebrating uh, the beheadings and the other raw brutality that's being broadcast to the world. Uh, there's actually a very good analog to this, which is the predecessor of ISIS, al-Qaeda in Iraq. In the 2005 to 2007 period, it looked like al-Qaeda in Iraq had basically eclipsed the overall al-Qaeda organization. It also had videos of beheadings. It was notorious for the kind of brutality it was carrying out. And its leader, Zarqawi, was... Uh, perhaps a more towering figure than bin Laden. But if you fast forward a few years to when you actually got a backlash against that brutality, the group's brand had become toxic. And mm -hmm. similarly, when ISIS starts to lose, the brutality may not look so cool. And we did notice a difference in the latest uh, video that they just released yesterday, the British journalist, um, who was clearly in distress, but a different video than the ones that had been released before, obviously. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. My pleasure.